And we hope you guys have woken from your sad naps. Uh -oh. oh, we barely have, and God, I'm going to need one. Uh, welcome to Wake Forest University in the, uh, the Deacon Towers here. We have uh, accosted one of the suites here, and we are going to be talking with uh, Patrick Math Mason and Ethan Joyce of the Rocky Mountain Telegram. Uh, I'm Edward Green, joined as always by McCollin Crime, Wes Bradshaw, and uh, who uh, uh, we've already blamed this loss on you. Because you weren't on a cruise. I wore my shorts at least. Yep. Come on, does that not give me anything? Good friend of the show, Josh Wallfish, already called it, uh, and I'm inclined to agree with him. <laughs> I don't know Wallfish says stuff when he's a state away now. Of course. He had nothing to say when he was standing next to him. Uh, South Point beats Rocky Mount 16 to 7. And guys, uh, just <clears throat> looking at the numbers here, you know, Rocky Mount, 2 of 12 in third down conversions, um, 2 of 5 in fourth down conversions. Zero red scoring, red zone scoring chances. Uh, they did have the touchdown uh, right at the end of the first half, the touchdown pass uh, from Lynch to uh, Shaheen Battle. But other than that, Rocky Mount kept off the scoreboard. South Point did exactly what it wanted to defensively, uh, and to an extent, Rocky Mount really did as well. But uh, you know what, Patrick? Let's start with you. Uh, what really stuck out in your mind uh, now that you've had I don't know about. A couple hours now to sort of start digesting and really getting a feel for what happened here today. You know what really kind of sticks out for me is um, the lack of rushing, um, yeah. losing 50 yards um, and just kind of going backward on, on running plays. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean that's not going to get the job done, no. and that just kind of goes hand in hand with what you're talking about with third down and fourth mm -hmm. down. I mean if you're giving yourself a you know second and 20, I mean yeah, I you're just putting yourself in a bad position, and they just couldn't climb out of that hole. Absolutely. You know you look at Rocky Mount, 30 rushes. For a net of 27 yards, yeah. that's less than a yard per carry. Uh, on the other hand, South Point uh, rushes 53 times for 199 yards, and you're thinking, well, then maybe there was a time of possession difference, but really, uh, South Point only had the ball for about four more minutes than Rocky Mountain did, so very even there. Uh, Ethan, what about you? What what kind of sticks out about this game? I mean, the rushing obviously does, um, but I think that that it really just speaks to how good the South mm -hmm. Point defense was because not only did it exp mm -hmm. not only did it shut down the just the thing that Rocky Mount is best at mm -hmm. it forced them to do exactly what South Point wanted and it just showed how one dimensional it could get for Rocky Mount mm -hmm. and like that's a good defense they can take a take a team and and expose them for for what they've been struggling <laughs> with all season which has been consistent quarterback play you know, Wes, we, we talked a lot about, you know, especially in our pregame here, uh, we felt that and we heard that this might be the best South Point defense ever. And we thought, you know, okay, you know, maybe, but how good can they really be? <clears throat> and even when we heard from Jason Bell in the postgame press conference, even he was surprised live versus tape how fast this defense was. Uh, you were patrolling the sidelines uh, down there with us. Uh, what, what stuck out in your mind from this game? Uh, field level, you know, definitely – I agree with Jason. The speed was a little surprise to me as well. Um, when you look at South Point physically, mm -hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong, good-looking bunch of kids, yeah. but, I mean, they don't really have a lot of guys who jump out to you. Number 33, Mick Muse, yes. big, good-sized athlete, about 6'4", mm -hmm. 225, 230. Mm -hmm. um, the wide receiver ended up catching the touchdown for him, number 23, good-looking mm -hmm. kid. I mean, they had, and they had a meaty defensive uh, tackle, yes. big kid on the defensive line. But, you know, I, if you just go by the eyeball test mm -hmm. and you pull them together, you're like, Psh, Rocky Mountain's going to roll this team. Mm -hmm. And then when they got out there, what really impressed me about them and something I pointed out, if you wanted to differentiate the two defenses, mm -hmm. Rocky Mount, with all their athleticism, which they have, um, and, and Rocky Mount's defense played a phenomenal football yes, game did. today. I mean, with the positions they were put oh, in, God. and we'll get to that in a little bit about mm -hmm. field position and everything, I thought Rocky Mount played fantastic, but... One of the differences in this game was South Point was able to get second effort yards yeah. mm -hmm. because Rocky Mount, as athletic as they are, a lot of times Rocky Mount goes down, puts a shoulder into you, mm -hmm. and expects you to go down on the hit. And today, especially the young man Jake Alexander, who was the most outstanding player, yes. he would take that first hit, mm -hmm. bounce off it, and get a couple more yards. Where South Point, when they got to the point of contact, it was instant wrap up. Mm -hmm. I'm not letting you go, and here come three of my buddies to hit you as well. That was the difference defensively that I saw. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, once again, we'll talk about the field position mm -hmm. in just a few moments. With the way they kept Rocky Mount in terrible field position all day and the way they tackled, didn't give up the second chance, uh, you know, opportunities, mm -hmm. 
That was the difference in the game to me. Yeah, Jake and, Alexander <clears throat> has 111 yards in the second half. Mm -hmm. Like he just. You know, he really, he really showed up that second mm -hmm. half and was phenomenal. Like you said, he, was, he ran a lot stronger than I expected mm -hmm. out of that kid because he's not the biggest kid in the world. And, and, I mean, even that, it was – my feeling on the sideline, I was never – even with him being able to run the ball pretty well, I was never fearful of that South Point offense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, my whole thing was, uh, let's just get the ball back. God, if we can – I was just hoping for a turnover – just for field position was all I was looking for for Rocky Mountain. Let's get them all to 50 once and see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, but they were able, South Point was able to churn out just enough first downs to when the point came for them to either turn the ball over on downs or punt the ball, Rocky Mountain's back to against the wall the whole time. You talk about real quick on those first downs. Neither team got to double digits in first downs on the mm -hmm. day. South Point, uh, they got the one late to ice the game. That was mm -hmm. their ninth first down of the game. Rocky Mount had six, didn't get their first one until late in the first half uh, on their one touchdown scoring drive. Wes, you talked about, and, and please guys keep jumping in like you are, uh, but you even put on, on Facebook a little bit about how bad the possession was in terms of starting field position for Rocky Mount all game, and um, conversely, how good a lot of it was for South Point on their scoring drives. It was, you take a look at this, and suddenly, of course, you give me this fantastic spotlight. This is what happens when you pair it down to one sheet versus eight. <laughs> I want to say, here we go. Um, average field position for South Point mm -hmm. uh, for the football game, their average starting field position was Rocky Mount's 48-yard line. Yeah. Rocky Mount's average starting field position was Rocky Mount's 27-yard line. <laughs> uh, and, I mean, when you, when you look at it here, um, six times in the ball game, mm -hmm. South Point started in Rocky Mount territory. Mm -hmm. That included all four scoring drives. Mm -hmm. uh, another one, uh, the only one that they really moved the football where they started their own territory was the missed field goal. Mm -hmm. For Rocky Mount, their best starting field position the entire game was at their own 45-yard line. They had drives that started their own 18, own 17, own 19, own 20, own 22. Mm -hmm. And with a defense that good against South Point, other than the touchdown drive, which Rocky Mount, um, you know, made some real gains through the air, mm -hmm. a defense that good, you're not going to be able to march 80 yards down the field on them that, it, with any sort of consistency. I guess the thing kind of about field position, too, is when Rocky Mount kicked off to open the second half, mm -hmm. I mean, that's your chance, right, yeah. to go, mm -hmm. you know, get them down on the 25 or the 30. And they just, yeah. South Point yeah. goes and gets this, you know, huge return. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that was your chance to really get a chance to flip their field, and they just they weren't able to do it. And, and that's a Rocky Mount kick coverage game that has been so yes. solid for them. Yeah, it's been great. And guys, yeah. in the past, of course, I know I'm the old head here. Mm -hmm. In the past, you know, we've seen years where as good as Rocky Mount was, you know, guys would be coming out of lanes. They did, you know, they would give up big, mm -hmm. big kickoffs. I haven't seen Rocky Mount give up a big kickoff yeah. return all year. Yeah. And suddenly it happens, and as you said, if you know, if you stop them there at the twenty or the twenty-five, you know, then suddenly if you get a three and out, you're getting the ball near midfield off the punt. Yep. Yeah, and, that the whole second half yeah. changes. Yeah, Let, exactly. Let's talk a little bit about the Rocky Mount offense today, guys. Um, one guy in particular, D'Angelo Collins, Jason Battle. When we talked with him on Monday at the press conferences in Raleigh. He singled him out as a guy that didn't really get a lot of pub last year in the state title mm -hmm. game, but was a huge part of that offense. Today, D'Angelo Collins has uh, seven rushes for 23 yards. Uh, B.J. Sanders goes eight rushes for a net of 17 yards, gained 31 on the day, ended up also losing 14. A lot of times the sweeps to the outside were just completely cut off by yeah. those fast South Point mm -hmm. defenders. Um, Shabios Lynch uh, goes... Did I get it right that time? Shabayas. Shabayas. God. You're getting close. One day. At least, at least it's not Shaboy anymore. Hey, I have one more week to get it right. You look very fresh. Um, Lynch goes 10 for 19, <laughs> 91 yards, takes five sacks, uh, does have the touchdown, did also throw a pick in the game. Um, where was this uh, Rocky Mountain offense that had, you know, started cresting a little bit midway through the playoffs at a high point against Southern <laughs> Guilford, then Havelock last week really took it to them defensively, and now this week South Point's defense also hit them very hard. You know, I guess it's kind of maybe that's not going to pop up in the stat sheet, but I think the secondary from South Point mm -hmm. they did a really good job of. I mean, if Rocky Mountain was sending out one or two receivers, they mm -hmm. were doing a really good job of kind of locking them down. I was watching a couple times when Lynch drops back; he's got nowhere to throw the football. Yeah. He's running around, you know, trying to get rid of it, and there's nowhere to put it. Um, I mean, so that's like kind of a coverage sack there. I mean, they were just kind of athletic all over the field. And I'll add to that from our vantage point where we mm -hmm. were, we had all the fans behind us. 
you know, everybody's screaming, throw the ball, you idiot, what are you doing, throw the ball. And I'm sitting there like, kid, get rid of the ball. You guys were upstairs, you had that high advantage. I couldn't see everybody being yeah. covered down there. Yeah. So I'm really glad you brought that yeah. up, that it's not that... It's not like the kid was just holding the ball because he wanted to hold the ball all the time. Yeah, they were like, nowhere to go. Yeah, and then and there were also the overthrows that were just, mm-hmm. I just got to get rid of this ball, and there was nobody that could catch it, and he couldn't really put it anywhere for anyone to catch it, anyways. Um, there was one big overthrow. We we kind of debated about the, whether how much of an overthrow mm-hmm. it was. Just missing Artavius Richardson in the second half on what could have been a huge gain mm-hmm. right uh, right across midfield, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you hate to say it, but. <laughs> Lynch, as good as important as he was last week, made the pass against Havlock to mm-hmm. to tie the game up. If this is a different quarterback, does Rocky Mount win this game? I don't know, just because the front seven of South Point mm-hmm. was so good. Like there, mm-hmm. that pocket was just crumbling for yeah. him too. And and it's like Patrick said, part of that's the secondary right. taking as much time as possible, and that mm-hmm. pass rush gets in there. So mm-hmm. I don't know if I don't I don't know if it's necessarily Shabazz's fault. Mm-hmm. You know, I just think that. They met a team that was really good and ready for him. See, if you got you know Tom Brady back there, he's still going to be saying the exact same pressure. You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's still, I mean, anyone's going to face that same yeah, pressure. And I guess a wonderful jawline. <laughs> <on him. laughs> nice I guess when you talk about that pass to Artavius, um, just kind of watching it, the defender looked like he was maybe a step behind Artavius. Mm-hmm. So if you mm-hmm. underthrow that ball a little bit, Absolutely. it's going to get picked off. Yeah. So you kind of have to just maybe hedge your bet a little bit, mm-hmm. just throw it long. Maybe hopes your receiver can you know get an extra step or two. Um, but I mean, really, that's all you can do. Put that ball where he did, and yeah. you know, just kind of hope. And, and as good as Artavius is on defense, like he hasn't really been a pass catching exactly. guy the whole time. So, like, who's to say that he just doesn't go stone hands there? You know, it's. And that's and that's actually what I said. Wes, yeah. Wes and I were talking about this a little bit after the game. It did look like a pass that, and I said, you know, and no offense to Artavius Richardson, who is a great athlete, maybe a better. He's made some big catches in the playoffs. Yes, yeah. maybe yeah. a more true receiver mm-hmm. ends up making that catch. We noticed Richardson instead of trying to get catch it in stride with his back still to the play, ends up turning his entire body around and then trying to kind of go up like this. Never really gets any height on the ball, and it does kind of go off his hands a little bit. So I think that was a very tough play for him to make mm-hmm, coming sure. out like that. Um, um, and, and you know, given given a little more credence to uh, Spice Lynch, um, another thing, you know, his offensive line. Mm-hmm. There were times today he had time to throw. Yeah. But when when you completely take away a run game, mm-hmm. which I mean that's what happened. That game, that run game, I I have never seen a Rocky Mount team in the last basically since the beginning of the BW Hold mm-hmm. era. I've never seen a Rocky Mount team get the run taken away from them like I did mm-hmm. today. And and part of that, um, you know, I was down listening to Robert Hart, who's uh, mm-hmm. coaching the offensive line for Rocky Mount, the lineman. Um, they were having serious discussions in between plays with the linemen. What's yeah. going on? What's going on? What are you seeing? I don't know what I'm seeing. I just think um, I think Mickey Linebacker just called a hell of a football game today. Hey, very yeah. unscientifically. We talked I about this. Point was fantastic. I think it was about in the third quarter, and I don't uh-huh. really know his name, but number 73 on the offensive line for Rocky uh-huh. Mount. About seven or eight times after plays, when they were especially on plays for loss for Rocky uh-huh. Mount's offense, we'll look to the silence and go, <laughs> like this, like what? What are we yeah. supposed to do? And and I think that there was that adds a lot of credence to what you're saying, Wes. It was yeah. there did seem to be a lack of communication yeah. or a lack of, of of seeing what was actually yeah. happening from that South Point defense. Um, and just something else to add, when, when you asked about you know a Rocky Mount offense that was peaking, what's happened the last few weeks? Mm-hmm. I'm thinking earlier this happens, including Rocky Mount. You might have seen the three best defenses in three A in That's small three A football. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And maybe 3A football as a whole. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've seen Rocky Mount obviously week in, week out. That mm-hmm. Havlock defense, I mean, you don't give up a 99-yard touchdown pass, and they held Rocky Mount under 100 yards mm-hmm. up to that point. Uh, and then today, I mean, this South Point defense is just mm-hmm. fantastic. I think you just, you just ran into some amazingly good defensive football teams. Yeah. I mean, you take a look at Southern Nash, who yep. I think is close to that level as well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, they held Rocky Mount in check for the most mm-hmm. part. So... There is, there is blame to go on the Rocky Mount mm-hmm. offense, mm-hmm. but I almost believe I give more credence to the South Point defense mm-hmm. and the Havlock defense yeah. mm-hmm. than I do Rocky Mount offense. What the hell are you doing? Yeah. Um, let's not again not to go on the blame, but unfortunately, when when there is a loss, we do have to sort of from this side of the football, we have to start thinking about what went wrong. Mm-hmm. Jason Bell mm-hmm. had a 
amazing postseason, made adjustments. We talked about it. Maybe the one of the best coaches has made, yeah, the last two years has made adjustments better than maybe any other coach that we've seen. He seemed to get a lot of things wrong today. And it's not all his fault. And it's not even things that, you know, when you look from a non-results-oriented standpoint that he might have gotten wrong. But a couple of things, you know, that just may have shown it wasn't his day. Uh, South Point kicks off. It goes out of bounds. And he says, well, let me give my guys B.J. Sanders and Detroit Rebus another chance. Ends up, instead of getting the ball to 35 on the penalty, ends up only getting to about the 21. Um, the, the fourth and 17 with about six minutes to go after the missed South Point field goal, deciding to go for it pretty deep in your own territory. Um, South Point stops them, gets the ball, and ends up kicking the field goal to make it 16 to seven. It, it just seemed like he tried some things and none of it worked today. Every To put in a little cliche, everything kind of came up snake eyes for him. What, what do you guys think about see, that? See, I think he's a guy who has a lot of trust in his players. and mm -hmm. He's gonna say, go out and make a play for me. Mm -hmm. And I think he might have got maybe a little nervous or might have maybe banked on these kids or asked too much from these kids. Mm -hmm. When it's fourth and 17 yeah. in your own zone, I mean, six minutes left. I mean, he, he spoke uh, post game we, about worrying. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he, he spoke mm -hmm. worrying about they're gonna run down the clock. But, I mean, go, go right ahead. Like you said, two timeouts. I mean, let them run it down to two, three minutes mm -hmm. to go. You get the ball back, it's still down one score. Yeah. Um, to put yourself down two scores is, that is just mm -hmm. unresponsible, I think. And also a defense that, I mean, at that time, yeah, you know, South Point in the second half, they had their times where they moved the football zone. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, as good as my defensive play, I'm, I'm yeah. trusting my defense there. Yeah. Um, now, that said, Ed, as we, as we like to point out, mm -hmm. between the two of us, uh, you've never played football, <laughs> and uh, and I wasn't that good. Yeah. Um, and, and when it comes to coaching, unless we're talking 12-year-old baseball here, you and I are out of our league when it comes to Jason Bowden. Jason Bowden, fantastic Absolutely. coach. One of the absolute best young coaches in the state. Maybe didn't have his greatest game yeah. today. Um, and everybody's allowed to have a not-so-good day at yeah, the it, it just It sucks when it's the state it, finals. Yeah. Um, but I agree with, you know, he does trust his players. Mm -hmm. And you know what? His players have – Earn his trust. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're the defending state champions, when you've won coming into this, you know, nine consecutive playoff games, and he's rolled the dice in some of those mm -hmm. games, and things have come up. Millhouse. Um, certainly can't have Millhouse today. I mean, just look at a week ago at this time, we're talking about a 99 yard touchdown. Yeah, because they proved that they can set yeah. up and make these plays. Um, I, I did disagree with it. Um, I'll go to my grave with Jason, don't worry. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I, I was thinking if it's less than 10, I can see maybe yeah, going for it, absolutely. but fourth and seventeen—that's that's a lot when you haven't done hardly anything. Especially <laughs> when the oh, I'm sorry. Ethan, uh, I was going to say I think you're also kind of stuck in a really tough spot where mm -hmm. one, I could really use something mm -hmm. to get the offense going, and if it's a fourth and seventeen conversion, yeah. that'd be yeah, huge. Absolutely. And two, you're also stuck with we rely on this defense so much, mm -hmm. yeah. and we owe them a break, mm -hmm. you know. And do we want to test South Point again? I mean, you might as well. Mm -hmm in my opinion, just because both of these offenses, you really didn't prove a lot. These defensive, both sides proved way more than the offenses mm -hmm. did. Um, but you're also stuck in that point where I'd love to challenge South Point again, but at the same time, they've already scored on us. Yeah. You know, so it's just, that's a tough call to make. You know, fourth and 17, that's pretty gutsy. I don't think I could have done it, but you are in a, a tough spot. The thing for me is Lynch had found a lot of a lot of joy this uh, this game in passing when it came to the more short and medium passes. Yeah, it was just I, to me even if he ma makes the completion, it's going to be very hard for him to find something more than seventeen yards. Yeah, um, I think something else that might have played into this game for Rocky Mount mm -hmm. coming into the week. Now this was just you know ears to the ground things I'd heard. Um, I was hearing that uh, we were going to see Detrell Rebus more on the offensive side of the football, mm -hmm. um, that he was going to, they were hoping to have him a more substantial mm -hmm. role in the game. Uh, Rebus, very early on, I don't know if this was a pre-existing yeah. something, he came out of the game very early on, actually on that stop four down Rocky mm -hmm. Mount had, right. uh, was, was pointing to his mm -hmm. wrist, seemed to be having problems with his wrist. Um, Many times when they would come on the field defensively, he was over with the trainer. Uh, they were working on his uh, on his thigh at one time. Detrell Rebus was not 100%. Um, and that's not to take anything away from anybody else. But I, I, I believe Detrell Rebus is a kid who he is your best athlete. He's your fastest kid you've got. I mean, he, he saved the touchdown on the long run late uh, from Alexander. Uh, he kept Rocky Mount in it. 
I think if they could have found a way to get him the football if he was healthy to go, I think that could have, you know, because basically what you're looking for, you're looking for a key to open the lock. Mm-hmm. I think that could have been the key to open the lock. But unfortunately, he, he just he wasn't available to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we saw him on his kick returns. He didn't really have the burst that we're used to. And I'll tell you, you know, the, the call of, you know, hey, let's re-kick it. Mm-hmm. I've got Detroit Rivas and B.J. Sanders yeah. back there. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling really good about that group. I just I, For that more, hey, South Point just did a great job covering kicks today. But, um, you know, I, I would have liked to have seen that bullet in Rocky Mount's gun. Mm-hmm. And, unfortunately, um, I, don't think it, I don't think it was available today. And that re-kick, again, is another situation of, like, I just need some kind of explosion yeah, yeah. on offense. That's, and that's what that's, I was thinking. Yeah, too. and, yeah, like, that's that's been such a – a tried and true thing for Rocky Mount this year is getting good field position from their yeah. kickoff returns. Yeah, I mean, when you've got two athletes like that, and also you saw KK Edwards was up just in case you decide to mortar kick. Yeah, hey, that's why we got KK Edwards, and he's he's going to be able to return. Yeah, um, and I agree with you. That's something they've relied on that to give them good field position all year mm-hmm. and to give them that spark. And I think that might have been what he was going for as well. Was mm-hmm. I can get it to thirty five. All of them haven't done a lot. Yeah. You know, if Rebus or, you know, BJ can get a, get a hold of one, we might be on their 35 when we start mm-hmm. this drive. So I, I don't have a problem with that. I thought it was a worthy gamble. And just like you said, everything's coming up snake eyes today, unfortunately. Yeah. Most of Rocky Mountain's gambles came up snake eyes. Uh, luckily for Rocky Mountain, throughout the last two years, a lot of their gambles have come good. Uh, they've won a state title. They had won nine straight playoff games coming into today. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, it ends here in Winston-Salem. Um, and I know you guys have only been covering them for a little bit, but uh, I just kind of want to think, you know, as now this is a two-year stretch, uh, Rocky Mount, I believe, has now lost to Middle Creek twice in the two years, one of the best 4A teams mm-hmm. in the state. Uh, they lost to Rose last year. Mm-hmm. They lost to Southern Nash this year, mm-hmm. and now they've lost to South Point, a team they beat last year for the state title. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty damn good two-year stretch, and, and I'm wondering now. Now that we've had you know a couple hours to kind of back away from it, you know, looking at big picture stuff. I mean, this is one of the you know this side of Tarboro. This is one of the greatest runs we've seen in our area in a very long time. Um, myself being more the Rocky Mount historian here, yes. I, can, I can go back on some things because um, I was actually talking to Mike Ganey down on the field after the game. Um, 62-63 is obviously the most famous run in Rocky Mountain history. As we, you said to Jason Bell, when yes. none of us were alive. Yeah, well, yeah, none of us were alive. Obviously, um, you know, football, basketball, baseball, football, mm-hmm. all in a 12-month span. Right. Mm-hmm. Mind blown. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, never mm-hmm. happened again, obviously. You know, it's never happened again. It was obviously a special time. A lot of people call that the, the golden era of Rocky Mountain athletics. Mm-hmm. I disagree. You're sitting in a run right now, starting in the spring of 2008. Rocky Mountain has won one baseball state championship, mm-hmm. two basketball state championships, a football state championship, and now the football runner-up also have seven individual state champions in, mm-hmm. in uh, Shrock, different Green, events. One of them. Mm-hmm. I think we are in a golden age of Rocky Mountain athletics right now. We have been for going on a decade now. Um, I just I believe football football is always the tough one. You show you come to Rocky Mountain, they've got five state titles in baseball. I believe five in basketball. Mm-hmm. Football had always been that albatross ever mm-hmm. since uh, before the integration days. Mm-hmm. Um, and to suddenly this group, they get one last year, they get back this year. Yeah. I mean, it had not been to a state title game since '77. Mm-hmm. Once again, before all of us were alive, <laughs> not you, Clint, you're old. But uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I believe right yeah. now Rocky Mountain is having an unparalleled run. Mm-hmm. Um, you can look at the other schools in Nash County, not taking anything away from them. Nash Central, Southern Nash, Northern Nash combined, they don't have the state titles Rocky Mountain's gotten the last eight years. Yeah, um, it, it's it's been a phenomenal run, and I'm gonna tell you with the class coming over Rocky Mountain, I don't I think they could continue a really good run. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of my thinking of where this team is right now. Especially this group, those seniors this year, your Sherrod Greens, our Taylor's yeah. Richard, Thomas Battle, those kids. We asked Thomas Battle in the post game. Mm-hmm. I think I kind of called him. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm sorry about that. Thomas yeah. is bloody, but, um, I think their legacy is, in, is set in stone. Yeah. That, you know, like 50 years later, we talk about Danny Talbot. In 50 years, we might still be talking about Sherrod Green and the Griffons who almost went back to back. Yeah, I just I think they're that good. I think they're that special, and that's just, that's that's my thoughts on this. 
Um, do you guys have any thoughts on maybe the team going forward now? Any thoughts maybe about some guys coming up? Not specifically, but just how maybe how Rocky Mount looks going to next year. Well, I mean, I think I think Coach Battle was in Monday. I think he was talking about how how good he felt about some of the classes he had coming up, and the JV team was very successful this year. I want to say they were, I want to say nine and one, maybe. Somewhere yeah, there. somewhere. So, I mean, they have a good crop of talent coming up. You know, Shaheen Battle, I think, is going to be just a really great piece yeah. for them going forward, and and the trail is going to be awesome. A, yeah. I think Shaheen Battle's a superstar waiting the bus. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think that kid's got division. This one this might have been his coming out party a little bit, not same class, but a little bit how last year might have been Detroit Reeves' coming out party. This might have been Shaheen Battle's last two games especially. And the thing yeah. with Battle, he's got the size. I think that yeah. kid's got to be one written over him in the future. That's the thing. Measurements go a long way in college football. Yeah. Yeah. Especially kind of when he grows into his body. He's already <laughs> yeah. got the, the yeah. height, can't the long, the length. Can't. Yeah. <laughs> can't. Yeah. So. Um, but I'm, I'm excited about the future Rocky Mount. You know, uh, now you've got you got big shoes to fill next year. Yeah, that was saying about Rocky Mountain this year. They brought back a lot of that state title defense. Mm-hmm. You brought back a Division One linebacker. Uh, will most likely be Division One defensive end in our territory. Mm-hmm. And a monster in the middle in Thomas Battle. Um, you brought back a ball hawk at the back in the trail, Revis. Yeah. Uh, now, Revis is back next year. He's mm-hmm. your he's your leader on this defense coming back yeah. next year. But you got Shaheen Battle. Um, you've got some other kids, especially the linebacker position, mm-hmm. who got some really good experience because Sherrod Green wasn't 100% this year. Yeah. Got some kids there. I think um, I think Rocky Mountain is loaded up. It's going to be kind of like kind of like what South Point just went through. They're going to be growing pains because they are going to be replacing a lot. But I think he's very happy with what he's got coming up. But you know, and, and South Point had a tough out of conference schedule. Their yes. conference not so yeah. good, and you know that fluffed up kind of what they had uh-huh. done a little bit, but. You get that playoff stretch, and they were able just to completely dominate everybody. No, I believe no playoff games giving up more than uh, giving up double digit points. Right, six yeah, points, six I think. points. Yeah. It was just until until the day, yeah. six points in mm-hmm. total. What, thirteen? Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, like, seven, that's not a bad playoff. <laughs> yeah, I guess they're past eight games. I think they allowed fifteen points. But you know, and, and that's the that's thing incredible. too is like you know, Rocky Mountain's going to keep scheduling Apex Middle Creek, and they're going to keep ske- trying to schedule all these big teams mm-hmm. to keep testing themselves and. The, the Big East has gotten better, and the yeah. Nash County teams are getting better. Yeah. And that's only that's only better for Rocky Mount going forward. And I'll say this about that. You know, we've looked at – let's take Tarboro as an example in the past. Tarboro schedules very strong out yes. of conference because they've known going into conference. Mm-hmm. No offense <laughs> to Rivers. Yeah, they pretty much knew unless somebody screwed something up, they were running the table and they were yeah. doing it easily. Yeah. What Rocky Mount's going to do, and I think this is a big help with as much as Rocky Mount is going on the road, because the problem with scheduling hard in the non-conference mm-hmm. is you can play your way out of that number yes. one seed. Mm-hmm. Rocky Tarver. Mount, Tarver did that. Yeah. Rocky Mount is road tested. Mm-hmm. These kids, I mean, they, they've been to Havelock in one. They've been to Southern Guilford in one. They've been to Southern Nash in one. You know, last season they went to Eastern Guilford in one. They have been on the road. I don't think Rocky Mount is so worried about, oh, God, we've got to be the number one seed. Everything mm-hmm. has to run through Rocky Mount because it hasn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, this these this two-year stretch, it hasn't run through Rocky Mount. Mm-hmm. They've had first-round games at home and the third-round game a yeah. year ago. That, they that, was, kinda, that was a gift. Yeah, they got mm-hmm. that gift because um, – Have you know, the gift that keeps on giving. We love you, Have one. <laughs> Merry Christmas, guys. Don't um, think we didn't see your guys' <laughs> banner at the uh, press conference on Monday. We love you. Um, but uh, but uh, that's that's one thing I like going forward is, you know, where a Southern Nash, it seems very crucial to Southern Nash that they had home field advantage. Mm-hmm. I think Rocky Mount's just at a point as a program, they're like, we don't care if we're at home, we don't care if we're on the road, we're just coming to play. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's something to build off of. Once again, playing young guys in state championship games, when you can build on that, mm-hmm. that keeps that program turning, turning over. They're teaching the next mm-hmm. generation, the next generation. I mean, we've seen it at Rocky Mount. We saw it when Holt was there. It was a six-year run that was incredible. And Jason Battle, when he got his chance at it mm-hmm. after the Dark Ages, um, he's taken that and he's built on that mm-hmm. run. That's how you build a program. It's not just worrying about one season of the next. It's how you build a program. Absolutely. And the best thing about building this program for next year for Rocky Mount, to troll Revis, he's going to be the backbone of that defense, mm-hmm. and he never gets tired. <laughs> so with that, uh, guys, we're about to wrap up here. Any closing thoughts from any of you guys, though? This is a, a fun game. This is a heck yeah. of a game. If you like defense, this Should is Should have been at last year's. 
<laughs> felt, felt some Big Ten out there. Yeah. Weather and everything. Oh, Weather, yeah. Yeah. terrible That's a nice one. <laughs> That's a nice one, yeah. 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 But yeah, like state it's title games are fun. Yeah. State title games are fun for us to cover, too. Mm-hmm. Like it's, Absolutely. They're the, it's the best time of year. And, oh, you know, yeah. you, we would much rather cover a winning game than a losing game oh, just for, you know, the topic purpose. Absolutely. But, but um, what a ride it's been. To, and it's been so interesting, too, just because I started covering them at the beginning of the year and Patrick was covering more at the end. So, like, we both came here just, like, mm-hmm. you know, really knowing a lot of the kids on the sidelines mm-hmm. and coach battle and stuff. So it's just – it's been a cool year and a cool first year for us to, yeah, to, to see football this season. I was going to tell you all from experience, state championships don't come around every year. So, <laughs> yeah. folks, at home, listen, I know we're all disappointed Rocky Mountain yeah. loss. Probably none more than me because this was the rematch yes. built just for West. <laughs> um, but savor it, enjoy it. Because remember, the last time Rocky Mount won a state title, we didn't go back for 15 years after that. And since then, it's been basically a couple generations since they got back. So, you know, it doesn't come around every day. Enjoy the chances while you have them. And um, I, I think time will look back very fondly yes. on this Rocky Mount team, much like mm-hmm. our last Tarboro team that yeah. we did right here in Winston-Salem. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we love those guys. Taquan mm-hmm. Lewis, uh, Trayvon Marshall, mm-hmm. we love those kids, man. Nobody thinks anything bad because they lost a the state title game. Because no. it's better to get to the state title game and lose than to never get there. Yes, absolutely. So, Wes, thank you very much. Ethan, Patrick, thank you so much. And you know you guys got papers uh, to go put out and articles to publish. So we'll let you guys get back to that. Buy your Rocky Mountain Telegrams. Yeah, they're going to have some great things. If for nothing else, you know, read them and then put them in the scrapbook. And that's going to do it for us here from Winston-Salem today. Uh, For the all-new sports show, we're going to be back in a couple weeks to do our holiday non-denominational, meh, tacular. Uh, So we hope you guys have a great holiday season. We'll be back with you here on Facebook Live Good on the All New Sports Clint. Show. Awesome, yes, man. thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Deuce. And uh, check you, us out uh, on Twitter at All New Sports Show. Let's keep putting us over. You. I'm at West Bradshaw 21. You. At by Ethan J. You. <laughs> I thought there was more. I thought <laughs> we could keep going. Uh, I'm at PM222. I am at Edward Green. Uh, so thank you for joining <laughs> us here. Oh, Clint. Clint underscore Williams. <laughs> Sure. Um, you can find uh, all of us on the Twitter. Keep finding us here on Facebook, youtube.com slash the all new sports show. Find us on Instagram. Email us all new sports show at gmail.com and keep checking out the podcast, the Afford a Bear podcast. So from Winston Salem, South Point beats Rocky Mount 16 to 7. No repeat for the Griffons, but it was a blast to cover it. We will see you guys next time on the all new sports show. Love you guys.